I am. I'm tired, Jess. I'm tired, tired, tired. All the time anymore. So, you know, cause I, just don't sleep. I don't sleep. Yeah, I'm sure you've gone through the same thing with your back. Like, every time you move at night, you wake up. And so you don't get good sleep. Yeah. Yeah. No, I've started doing a couple different things. Um, and I, we're going to talk to, in two weeks, we're going to talk to a physical therapist that has, does the dry needling and the mm-hmm. cupping. Okay. And so I've tried the dry needling. It seemed to help a little bit, but I've also started taking like a half a pill of uh, CL like three times a day to see if that helps. Well, I do have to tell you, I have noticed, at least from your speech, that you've been taking CL because it's you're definitely you're you're speaking more clearly. So thanks. For the you're compliment. welcome. <laughs> I'd love to give you a compliment anytime I can for how yeah. much did I give you the, the other days. Um, but so the, your, your back is still bothering. It's bothering you at night. Like it's your shoulders, like your upper back, right? It's more like down my spine almost like about a quarter of the way down my spine. Well, is that um, kind of like what Steve and, and others have been dealing with? Is it like that? I don't, I don't know. Uh, now I'm starting to cry because you got me gave me a compliment. Oh, your tearing eyes. Um, well, I had it. So, do you think like is there anything different that's going on like in your life that not no, necessarily would give you stress, but like just some sort of like energy or whatever? No, I just think it's I just think it's one of those things that everything cycles through. To me, it's like you know you and I talked about a little bit uh, Saturday. You know, like I used to have really extreme. When I first got diagnosed, I had extreme wrist pain. Mm-hmm. Like to, you know, and then I moved up into my elbow. I had a lot of elbow pain. I moved to my shoulder, you know, and now now those are really bothering me. Nearly like the back, you know. And it's just it's just it's weird. Cause yeah, I'm hoping it'll be here for a short time and move on to you know knee pain or <laughs> something else. So I noticed wrist pain, like if I like go down to do a plank or um, Mm -hmm. push up or something. So I don't know. Like, I think I was asking you that the other day. It's like, is it because like of what my arm was going through that it's, it's making its way down or like what Uh, that means. So, and now, and and like, now I can tell like my, my arm has, has been like decently, like has been decent for a little bit, but I've been going to physical therapy like every other week. But just yesterday, I had, um, like I gave a presentation and I had like, not stress, but just like excitement, I guess, like with work and just like, I was, you know, like really passionate about something. So I was like talking about it all day. And by like towards the middle and middle to end of the day, like my arm was getting so stuck and it was hurting so bad. Um, and then it hurt all throughout the night in the middle of the night. And like now it's like, it's just sore, but like a weird sore. It's like, and that's where I can't explain it. It's not like a workout sore, but it's like a, I don't know. It's a so, sore sore. So I feel like mine comes on with, again, it's not stress. It's just activity. I don't know. And it's like, in my philosophy here, I'm proven, but is you have to keep moving those parts of your body because it tells yeah. your brain that, hey, send carbo you know, send dopamine to this part of my body. Yeah, yeah. And I think, and you know, it's getting unproven, but I think it's like the back pain and so yeah, that's why we start to get hunched over and, you know, and stuff like that. It's just because it's easier to do that than just to fight through the pain and stand up straight yeah. and pinch your shoulder blades together. And, mm-hmm. you know. That's what I'm trying to do right now. Right. Do you have any other pains or issues or is everything else... Everything, well. Everything's a pain, Jess. Everything's a pain. You know, and that's the thing is, I think we talked a little bit about this, like, I don't know, last time after we shot the podcast, like, you just get tired of fighting everything. Tired and frustrated. It's so frustrating that, you know, you just want to wake up one day and not have, and be able to get out of bed and not have to be in pain or difficulty or being able to put your socks on or pick something up off the ground without having to go, oh man, ouch. <laughs> you know? I know. The joys. The joys of Parkinson's, you know? Not everybody gets to experience this stuff. We're lucky. No. No. 
But to your point, like, I, and I don't know, this is like people who are dealing with Parkinson's. It's, I think we've all heard it. And I know some people, you know, a lot of people probably don't like to hear it, but out of all like the neurodegenerative diseases, like if you have, <laughs> we, like, we got lucky. Have, yeah, we got lucky. Like we actually have it, I think, from what people have said, easier than MS. Obviously easier than ALS. Like I was just visiting yeah. my friend who's 40 years old who has ALS and she can't do anything on her own anymore. She can't walk. She can't lift herself up. She can't use her arms. Like she's she has one finger, she has her thumb left that she can still use. Her speech yeah. is like she sounds like she just has had like a sore throat for a year, you know, and so it's like completely scratchy and yeah. I mean, yeah. you always, I always try to think, you know, there's a, there's a lot of people out there that have it a lot worse, but it's still, I mean, but you're, we're still dealing with something, yeah. you know, so it's yeah, like, I mean, you, didn't, it, you need to feel sorry for yourself, you know, it's okay yeah. to take that time to, to just take a break, you know, and, well, and to get pissed off. I get pissed off sometimes now, mm -hmm. you know, where I didn't before, like, I mean, Jesus Christ, why can't I paint the damn bathroom without, or the kitchen or something like that without being in so much pain and mm -hmm. it's just so frustrating because there's simple tasks that yeah. that a 50 year old or 49 year old man to be able to do and it's like it's such it's such a challenge for me when's your birthday again you'll be 50 be, next year yeah big five of the year party yeah right but we let, let's just hope for a pain-free 50 yeah Good times. So we can celebrate 10 years with Parkinson's. Oh, will it be 10 for you? It'll be 10 diagnosed in December. Okay. Wow. Does yeah. it feel like 10 years? You know, it's actually gone. It's, it's still gone by for fairly quick. I know. I feel the same way. I don't know if that's good or bad. <laughs> I, don't know, I don't know either. So, um, so you're going to try the pump. I'm going to quit crying and whine about all my pains and aches. And, uh, I don't, yeah, I mean, I don't know. I'll try the, the new AbV pump. Is it called a pump or is it a, the pump is like the old one. That's, that's the Duopa, right? And then this is the subcutaneous yeah. infusion. Uh, yeah, I don't know. I'm using fun words. It's, uh, it's all, all I know is it's like a little sticker like that with a little needle that goes into your, on your skin, which then I was thinking, I'm like, okay, if I try this, I'm assuming it doesn't have to be on like like tight skin because I, yeah, I don't know I, I said it all looks kind of cool except for the the pump sizes i'm like that thing is big oh the the actual yeah where the like, they keep the the medicine in yeah the what is a bullet is that what they call it the what is it a bullet the bullet uh, i don't know we'll learn more and we'll share but yeah i was just i just started thinking about though too with with that sticker thing that you put on, it's supposed to go near your belly button. And I'm like, well, after having twins, I have, um, like my, my skin never went back right there. Like just this little, little part around my, around my belly button. So I'm like, I, I hope it will work. If not, I'm sure I'll find some more skin someplace else. Well, they said, I mean, like I've, I already heard it's supposed to, I don't know why, but it's supposed to go near your belly button and then you move it every day. Every day, I think so, or every couple of days. We'll have a we'll have a quick follow up to this because I'm sure everyone's going to have questions just like we are. Yeah, I mean, we'll my questions to... are my my questions are: Is it does it? How often do you have to move it? How do you sleep with it? And how do you <laughs> live with that? Kidding around that? <laughs> <laughs> like, cause do you work out with it? Then I mean, you have to, but like, how do you jump? I don't know. Huh. I have lots of questions. Yes. Well, you get your question answered. And come back to us. Okay, I could do that next week. Next because so, we don't have any. We don't have any more podcasts recorded. I don't think so. We'll do this again next week. I'll learn some information, and then we're, we're recording in two weeks, where we'll have Carl be John to talk about his innovation. Who else are we having on? Uh. I think we got what, three scheduled right now. I think. Yeah. I thought. We're gonna have the PT on to talk about dry needling and cupping. See if that helps. Yeah. Oh, that's right. Oh, did I tell you about my new podcast? Have you watched it? 
I did watch. I watched it this morning. So, um, what do you think? <laughs> well, yeah, no, <laughs> it was good. It was, you know, it's it's just a different environment than what we have. Yeah, and when it's it's just it's still it's the beginning, you know. So we're we're feeling it out. Um, but it's called Patient RX, and the audience is supposed to be for the healthcare industry. Because mm-hmm. the idea is, you know, we want as people in the pharma industry, myself and my other, the other host, Tina, she has breast cancer. So it's like how, like, we're both in the pharma industry, but we're both patients and we don't want to just speak our patient story, but we want to talk about our patient journeys and what we're learning and how can we, how can we bring light or awareness to things that we're experiencing? How do we bring that light to the pharma? And, and healthcare world. Yeah. So where do we find this uh, new and fancy podcast? It's on YouTube and it's on Spotify and um, Amazon. And it's um, called. It's Patient, Patient RX. Yeah. All right. But we did. I did. I mean, I'm I'm using some of the stuff that we've learned. I mean, that that's actually why I wanted to do it is because the you know what we learned from Dr. Walters and you know what uh, we learned from Dr. Patel of like the whole medications to avoid um, in the hospital setting. Like I started working with people in at my company and with just in the pharma industry to like, okay, we need to solve this. Like, I know we can solve it because this is the work that I've seen happen, but no one's doing anything except now Dr. Walter has, and I know um, Ohio health has, but it's like, we need to make that broader. So that's kind of what, what, what was fueled behind this new podcast is okay. How do we get the, right individuals involved and aware because it's like with this drug to disease interaction that we get in hospitals, Mm -hmm. we can't be the only disease group that this happens to. So absolutely not. If we, if I bring awareness to, to it for Parkinson's are, will other disease groups or advocacy groups say like, Oh, we have that same issue. And like, okay, that can be fixed or looked at or something. And then hopefully we, they can start making changes. So check out, did you check out episode number three? Uh, yes, I did. That was the one that, yeah, that was the one about the, the compend, what Dr. Walters and Ohio Health have done. I watched it this morning as I logged in, <laughs> as I logged in to my computer. I was like, oh, what is this little schmoozer up to? I know, and it's, it's not Brian. It's no, not. We, have, we can have you on. No, I don't know. That's Judy deal right there. I was, yeah. You can take in clips of this and post up there. Then. I'll send you some royalties. Oh, right. Look at my fat face. Fat. Oh, yeah. You know what Melissa's going to say? She's just going to say you got to get to the gym more. I know. I know. She thinks the gym fixes everything, but. It does. <laughs> you know. um, okay, so we'll come back with updates on the new AbV infusion. And. Yeah, we'll talk about that next week. All right. Sound good? Talk to you then. All right, I don't have a, I don't have a 30 seconds. Is that bad? No. Um, okay. Sorry, guys. Uh, Thanks for tuning in, and we'll see you next time. Thanks.